greetings to you everywhere, wherever you may be in the galaxy. Hello, this is Commander Yannick, and this is the Passage to Andromeda Expedition. And we are today at uh, Waypoint Dangerous, which is obviously Waypoint number 11, after Elite Dangerous, the game Elite 4 that we are presently within, and you all know and love. Right, uh, I'll get down one moment to my, my historical talk as usual. Bear with me for just one moment. Hello to all of you out there in uh, Twitchland. It's always good to see you. It's always good to hear from you. Anyone who's in the chat, a big hello to you. Right, on with the show. Okay, so for this week, I say we have what was for many years speculated as being Elite Four. The third sequel to the original Elite game and obviously the Kickstarter for this started back in 2012 some you know one decade ago now it's been a while doesn't seem like that but it has been 10 years since the Kickstarter for Elite Dangerous it was actually uh, started by Frontier Development I think the original target was about uh, I think £1.3 million they were looking for. I don't think they could actually borrow this song quite so easily from banks, apparently, or without exorbitant rates. But also, it was a great idea to get the community involved with this. Obviously, there's a lot of people out there, and who are here today, that have played not just the original Elite, but its sequels. Me, obviously, I'm a sort of a kid of the sequels, not so much to the original game, but that's just the uh, way things are. Hey, Commander Sargon, how's it going? Ah, cool. Excellent. Right. The Kickstarter for Elite Dangerous, they say, was started in 2012 and, yeah, got a, quite a lot of traction fairly quickly. This is one of the pieces of the original sort of concept art that was released uh, not long after the Kickstarter began. And it really is sort of a lovely, sort of beautiful, very traditional elite scene you've got, obviously. The Cobra Mark Three sort of going into the station uh, through the mail slot. All the way from every elite has some version of this, so this is like, understandably, sort of a good image to begin with. But yeah, the uh, I'll show you some of the, uh, as I'm talking, the Kickstarter images that were released, the uh, the various conceptual sketches that were, were put out to the public and to Kickstarter people as well. Obviously some of these are like genuinely sort of beautiful pieces of art in their own right. This is obviously uh, an interesting picture of a station and looks like a gas giant probably. That, that seems more conceptual than anything else because we don't really have a station that looks quite like that in the game. A little bit but not really totally. I think that this is literally some of the earlier concepts. I think it evolved over time as obviously the conceptualization of the game changed over time as this all evolved. I think by the time the Kickstarter uh, came to conclusion in early 20, I think it was January uh, 2013, it had actually uh, gained its, and beyond its, its target actually, I think it's exceeded its 1.3 million target by about 200,000 and I think gained extra funding of a few hundred thousand from other sources too. But this is a particularly beautiful uh, piece of that sort of conceptual art that a lot of people have like kept in mind for the atmospheric planets, obviously, in, in Elite. This is obviously something of a thick atmospheric planet, and I think obviously we have, you know, Odyssey now that has very uh, sort of tenuous atmospheric worlds, and yeah, I think this is a particularly sort of good one because it shows all the details of these sort of surface bases in a very sort of complex and thick atmosphere with a, with a weather system. This is one of the things that uh, would be great to see in uh, in future space games, a sort of complex and uh, predict sort of like unpredictable weather system uh, within it. Obviously, the interior something we've not seen and may not see possibly in a uh, in a leak, which would be a shame, but we can always hope. Yeah, that's a chart, obviously, of the uh, Kickstarter actually exceeding its initial goals. And yeah, as you see down at the bottom, it's uh, in early January uh, 2013. It it actually exceeded its original targets, which is wonderful because I think I know Star Citizen did a very similar thing in that era. 
uh, literally the same year, started a Kickstarter to get a community backing for this new project. Obviously, you know, there's a whole different story with uh, Star Citizen and where it's been or where it hasn't been over the last decade. But both, I think, did a very useful thing in getting people involved. And I think when you got to like high tiers of Kickstarter, you could actually join a forum that was for like the high level Kickstarter people who you could like put in ideas uh, to be like, you know, sort of that the company might actually act on in the future. I don't know how many of them they actually acted on, but it's an interesting place where, that you could actually d discuss these things. And apparently a lot of ideas are submitted to the frontier by such a forum. This is interesting. I'm just like going briefly to describe the way that the whole Kickstarter thing worked as they do, but you've got these are like the lower tier ones. You can sort of buy reserve commander names all the way through to like the top end of it for the thousands of pounds. I was getting uh, dinner with David Braben and uh, members of his team. And also uh, naming the founder's secret, secret, secret sister was obviously Shinatra Desra, and I think that was the name of the guy who actually uh, picked that uh, prize first. And uh, <laughs> well, picked that prize, picked that le that tier first, I should say, more accurately. But yeah, the writers' pack is quite an interesting one. But some of these top ones seem to be particularly cool. I never had that kind of money to throw around, so it's very, very nice though. But it gives you some idea of what was going on at the time. It would be nice to have, like, at that £3,000 one, to have a system named after you. And that would be genuinely awesome. It doesn't have to be found as well, but any. Would be cool. Or named after, you know, using a name that you would pick. As it says at the bottom, you can basically use whatever name, as long as it isn't problematic or offensive to people. Obviously, the game did go through the various stages of development into public testing alpha beta and then finally gamma which was more or less the working galaxy uh before it released in december of 2014 i myself sort of bought into the game at that point so yeah i wasn't i was too late for the gamma or any other testing but the uh full release and uh everyone knows that obviously now is the sort of full base game over time obviously we've added different uh, updates, DLCs, whatever you wish to call them. Obviously, the first major one being Horizons. And obviously, Horizons, now known as Horizons 3.8, is actually the the first time we could land on planets, of course. And it was the first serious expansion of the game and gave that whole extra dimension. Obviously, off the back of this, so many expeditions, this one included... Uh, were launched and uh, Distant Worlds was a product of that and what you could do in it and obviously everyone knows all about that because everyone's played it at some point everyone here anyway but yeah it was a huge leap forwards and I love the cover art for this as well it's actually really quite cool it's the SRV driving towards the uh, the artist's perspective obviously over time we have the Beyond Era now in some ways this is even more interesting uh, sort of artwork for it. You see the Thargoids in the background, and then there's, you know, it looks like you know you've got Guardian ruins at the bottom and people being uh, dramatically investigating them all. But yeah, the true work of explorers, and uh, yeah, Beyond obviously was just an addition essentially to to expand the that kind of Horizons technology, and I think it was actually not a paid update, unlike Horizons and Odyssey, which has succeeded both which are paid, this was un, This was free actually, an unpaid update. I think at the time Frontier were thinking about charging for it, but then realised it might not be a good move with the fan base, but uh, uh, they didn't decide to do that with Odyssey, which is understandable, but you do need to make money at some point off of all this. But yeah, that's the, uh, the, the summarised version of the development of uh, the present version of Elite. I will now return... Uh, to the instance we have no odyssey instance this week it's just horizons but i uh, will keep the stream going and anyone out there in twitch land you can keep watching our shenanigans triumphs disasters etc all for your amusement <laughs> everyone in game i will see you in just a moment
Okay, back. Right, I'm rejoining uh, the people in the Horizons Flotilla. Okay, back in game. Right. Cool. So, have we started rolling now? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. No, you broke off there. Okay. Yeah, we hear you. I'm fine. Okay, if everyone's already rolling, then I'll uh, I'll start to pursue. <clears throat> yeah, the, the, the leading SRVs are about level with me. I'm at longitude one seven four point seven. Yeah, I'm just to get my auto fire to shut off. <laughs> Uh, if it actually behaves for once in its life, it might do that. I'm presuming that's you, the one just As I mute this all time. So, are you saying this already started? I thought everyone was just getting to the starting spot. No, no. It's, uh, everybody started in their own time. Oh. Okay. There's, there's I, plenty. I wish. I was just following Comet Bourne, but I stopped following him when he went off the edge. Yeah, ride. I went down there to try to get him to jump on my ship, but I have, didn't realize why my microphone was still on mute when I was trying to tell him to uh, okay. jump on my ship. But he recalled <laughs> his ship and it seemed to pick him up. I'm so cruising like, down the wall at the moment uh, just to see where everyone is and see if I can spot any, sh any SRVs along the way. <laughs> I'm at 174.6 longitude. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, I'm at 16k yeah, from like JBL. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm right behind Kit. Okay, cool. So I'm at 14k behind everyone. I'll, I'll keep cruising at the sort of moderate speed um, because there's bound to be some people behind. I'm not averse to stopping here and sort of letting everybody get in a group should we do that yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah i haven't seen any srv so far but i'm still scouring the uh the wall for it it's like game of thrones all over again <laughs> uh. and here we go yeah i'm closing in now Ooh. Watch out! I just crashed yeah, into the wall by accident. <laughs> pretty good, good gap between people. Yeah, you almost. Uh... <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. Is yeah, like I gotta keep. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing about like trying to run these things. Sometimes you gotta take your eye off the screen, and it's not a good idea if you're going close to an ice wall. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I found a few SRVs here. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at the stream that I'm putting out on Discord, you get a pretty nice view of the ice wall and just come along. Cool. Oh, com Comet Bourne's gone yeah. ahead. Okay. I think I'm Puppy watching the most... Audio rear wood of the uh, SRVs. But I... So I take it where this Python is, is where everyone, we're gonna stop for a minute? Yeah. All right, sweet. Now you get some better pictures too. Oh, I see Strapcast is down there. Okay. Maybe he's fallen off. 
because he seems to be stuck to. I don't know if I'm in the right place, though. Yeah, it looks like you're 200 kilometers away, according to this. Seven five clicks away. Yeah, that that's too far away. Mm, two clicks, two clicks by my, my uh, reading. Yeah, I think it's giving you a false reading somewhere. Hmm. Let's am see I who the, else there. Am I in the right place? Or? Um, our bet. Wait, so at the moment our coordinates are minus nineteen, uh, one seven four. Providing like the follow cam at the moment. <laughs> oh, right. Comic Born's coming back. Cool. That's good. I can see this oh. shadow of a ship above me. Narrow up here on the ridge line. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. At some places, it's probably about you can get oh, maybe two nice SRVs. Nice uh, shenanigans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I see there's a congregation of uh, ships and people. Yeah, yes, I'm posting it in Discord right now. <laughs> cool. My thing is, these canyons are so deep, we might be able to mass jump out of the canyon. Yep, yep. I think that may be possible. We'll see what the angle is later, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Obviously, just thinking of this event, I was thinking, what's the most Horizons kind of you know, ter terrain, what kind of is the most Horizon-ish thing that we just don't see in Odyssey? It's this, isn't it, really? These kind of super canyons that don't really seem to exist elsewhere. Mm. Oh, I'll tell you what I really miss are the central peaks of impact craters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a funny one to miss out. You just don't see them. It's surprising you don't see those in Odyssey. Cause, cause again, cause they, it... Yeah, they, they are a thing. Yeah, they absolutely are a thing, but it's just like, why would you not have that? I don't, I don't get that. I really don't. Lights in the air. <laughs> Let's get in a bit closer. Cool. Is this everyone or is someone else ahead of us? Every now and then I'm hearing a voice. It sounds like it's underwater. There's probably like a very bad. I think Sock and Pup. That's it. You're 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 coming across very. Your sounds very indistinct. Sock yeah. and Pup. Big fat ship. Oh, that's a bit better. Okay. My frame rate's gone completely. It's all of these SRVs with their lights. <laughs> It might be best to turn your SRV lights off, actually, because it does actually uh, lower the frame rates in groups. Why it does, it's like it shouldn't be that bad, but it is for some reason. They never quite streamlined that code. I don't know why, but they never did. I suppose it's, it's, the, it's the usual accusation that FDF don't play their own games, and there may be some truth in there. Right. I mean, or at least they don't much these days. Definitely yeah, used to. Where you are. I see Sato one nine oh one, but that yes. is too far. I like the ships throwing up all this ice, it's pretty nice.
Yeah, Panda Force is saying about Horizon's interesting issues. Yeah, there there are kind of weird ones about that. Like as they were saying about like the lights making more of a difference to instances than they should. There's weird quirks like that. I mean, it's definitely more of an art form getting uh, you know, Horizons together into instances and keeping them in instances. Okay, I think we can continue now. We've got. I think see a bunch else. of commanders who don't mind how much damage they do to their SRVs. Yeah. All right. Repair. Yeah. Make sure you're all repaired. And do you want to keep going? Oh, someone's got a fighter. Oh, no. Also. <laughs> you knocked me. Crap. Yeah, that's mine. So I'm trying to videotape, but someone knocked uh, me and, uh, yeah. the camera with it. <laughs> Fair enough cameraman <laughs> all right let me get out i was trying to get in the middle of your uh like uh lights in the sky type formation well this is yeah this is good it's going to be documented i mean jbl and myself are sort of doing it as well yeah i'm not recording oh fair enough okay and how how do you out there to anyone in twitch land this is the uh, ice wall fun of passage to andromeda <laughs> so we've basically got now like a ski sled sidewinder that's quite fun <laughs> uh, here we go here we go are you trying to like drive them forwards JBL are you trying to like, get motivation <laughs> sorry no, I, I thought for a second that you were like driving behind some of the SRVs and acting like as I could, have, I don't know, like a snowplow coming behind them or something. <laughs> oh, enigmatic. I think we're stuck. Yeah. No, I'm just sort of keeping a line roughly you know, behind or ahead of the lead SRV. Cool. Yeah. I noticed there that the ridge is one, one side. Sidewinder yes. wide. <laughs> keeping uh, keeping uh, attention to your uh, <clears throat> your hull damage. Yeah. Very easy to land by as well. I think the, there's a couple of places that are like one SRV wide or maybe two SRVs wide yeah. on this wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like a weird wildlife documentary. Mating <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, Pandafors is looking for a uh, a wing. Pandafors ninety nine. Gotcha. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, it looks like we are on the wrong instance. Is it already? Oh, we way? start back up again. Uh, we should know. we should still be going. Uh... I thought we were gonna wait a little longer. Okay. Uh, some people have started up already. Some people are still where they were. But yeah, uh, I can see some of the lights behind. Yeah. Yeah, the lights only slow things down if you're in a group. If you're by yourself, it doesn't matter that much. And there's little difference, if any at all. Yeah, no, they're they're definitely moving. Cool. <clears throat> no, that's okay. Just wanted to make sure I knew which way I needed to go. Cool. That's a dangerous jump. a little trail behind the SRV as it goes across the ice. Mm. 
maybe you can leave my wing, well, jump back in super cruise, and I reinvite you. Might work. Same goes for something. I just posted it in chat, but this has got this was a very good pick because the like the angle that I'm at right now, following the SRVs, it's you can it's almost like the, the way the ice formations are. It's almost like the uh, what the I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, but the borealis lights mm -hmm, in the yeah. sky. Sure, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's yeah. what it looks like. I, I posted one of uh, one of the pictures in the chat. I have yeah. this one. So you see what I'm talking about. Yeah, but exactly. It's, such, it's a beautiful scenery. Yeah. No, you got it right. The Aurora Borealis, that's the right. I think you're about 3K away from us there, Matrix. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was one of those people that did better in math and good at, bad, bad in English, better in math. Okay, let's have a look to zoom out to see the scale of the ice wall, because I think we're about it's a good few k of height we've got here over the uh, surrounding area. It sort of flattens out a little bit at the top here. I think we're, we may have passed the narrowest section, at least in this part. Uh, I'm going to gain a bit more altitude and uh, come down again in a minute. some scale onto this so as you can see we're kind of this wall is very long one big rock i think i hit that big rock as well yeah and then you see to one side the nebula kind of pop over the horizon huh can someone else try to wing panda pass in okay um i sent you a wing invite quite recently but i'll try again in a second is that is that a nebula or is that a stargoid in the if you're looking from behind the SRVs? Can't be a stargoid. It looks like one of the stargoid. No, they're not in Horizon, so we, we can't have them here. Because it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> ah, right, right. The code doesn't yeah. exist in, in Horizon 3.4.0. Like yeah, yeah. Huh, interesting. Because it looks like it has those swirls around it. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. So. I can see it too. Yeah, yeah the yeah, nebula is like an odd sort of effect. I mean, it's... So that was a nebula that you were talking about then. Yeah, I think you can see the edges of the nebula coming across the horizon, probably. I, I'm trying to think of what, what you're looking at at the moment. Um... Uh, if you just look back towards the... the uh... Actually, here, I'll take a... Take a high res screenshot. Mm -hmm. Take a it's high not just screenshot. waypoint eleven, is it? Huh. You're looking at. Uh, you'll see in a second. I'm gonna post it in the chat. It, it's, I mean, it's it's more purple than it is orange, but you could see it like if you just look at the towards the top of the cliffs, you can see it. Weird. I forgot that they didn't have that in uh, 3.8. Yeah, uh, sadly, uh, Frontier stopped development in that regard for 3.8 um, quite recently. I think it's when they did that thing with uh, the Asthma Saga. That was, uh, yeah, that, wa that wasn't uh, replicated yeah. in 3.8. Uh, no. How many do we got up way up front? Mm. I'm following a couple of people up here. 
That is the one. I think they're all strung out uh, between where you are and where we are at the front. Um... <laughs> the ridge has lost a bit of definition here. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, was a, a good time to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's entertaining at least, yeah. Plummet a few kilometers down to the ice below. <laughs> right. I think I lost. Am yeah. I too far? I think I expect a few more people who will catch up shortly. Right. Yeah, I got one over here. I'm trying to find where the rest of the group was. It's a magnificent oh, no, here they are. They're so <laughs> tiny. <laughs> right. I can't see any more SLPs. There probably are some coming along. Oh, I see some now, I think. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. I think the pack's bunching up I a bit. I only got two. Uh, wait. Yeah, I'm trying to find the other ones. Right now, I got. I think we got three over here where. No, one. No, I got two here where all most of the ships are. I mean, I'm going to go all the way back and track and see if I can see if there's anyone else. Oh, yeah, I can see there's a couple now. The, uh, there's a couple of headlights down there. We're at 173.58. Mm -hmm. I think you're quite close then. I'll shoot the laser off again. There's a, a beacon. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of those weird sort of um, bugs in Horizon. It says a strap cast is 700k and getting further from me, which obviously isn't true. <laughs> I'm going 1k above the surface. Uh, of the wall. Yeah, there's a couple more SRVs here. I'm going to go down to greet them. <laughs> All right. Well, there's no one, no one in the back where the ridge starts to get tight mm -hmm. and narrow. I mean. Yeah. Sure. How low can you go? I'm about a hundred meters up there. <laughs> I'm actually, I, for the first time I've been play playing, I'm at my parents' house using my dad's beautiful 4K monitor, and <clears> I'm <throat> actually surprised how well th even 3.8 looks in 4K. Elite is a beautiful game. This is the thing. You're right. It's like, funnily enough, if you say it scales really well, almost any screen it seems to look good, especially yeah, if you, you put it into like high resolutions, yeah.
Yeah, I like the way that you get all this sort of debris blown up from the surface, and even bit chips of ice from the ships if you go low enough. <laughs> it doesn't do that in out Odyssey anymore, which is weird. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. There's lots of it, you'd assume most things would carry over, but they don't, and yeah, it's hard to understand why. Well, actually, I don't know. I don't. I I never really tested it until well, or knew if there was a difference or not when we did the the limbo. Because mm -hmm. in the video that you sh you posted had it, and then when we did it, I saw the same thing, but I hadn't tried it in the Odyssey to see if it still does the same thing. I mean, I know it does with like SRVs; it'll kick up dust and stuff. But I never tried to see if the if there's any particles that go around when you're lower the ground, like we see now. You're yeah. Talking about. I mean, I'm not a good I person to, to tell you about that. what Odyssey has and hasn't, because I can only run it on the lowest possible resolution, so it might not even have that details at that resolution. Oh, no. Uh, I think Horizons 4.8 does a little bit better for me. That's probably not a surprise, though. Uh, yeah. It's amazing how much more processing power it seems to take just to add the on-foot component, which is, you know... I think that's just maybe a sign that the oh, code yeah. isn't actually that streamlined. It's it's more than it was, but it's still got a long way to go in that way. Hello, well, folks. Howdy. Uh, it looks like we cannot wing in with you. We we end up in the uh, alone. <laughs> Me and Pandaphos. You might be actually in the same place. Mm -hmm. It's just that you're not near us physically because we are moving yeah. along down the uh, the wall. So you might just not see us. I mean, you could be in a completely different instance. It is yeah. true, but it's hard to be sure. You know. At the moment, I'm at coordinates minus 19. Yeah, uh, let's... Okay. Yeah, I see your, I see your stream on mm. a different mo on, on, on monitor. Oh, cool, yeah, so and you can I see where I am, yeah. Uh, see your heading, and that uh, yeah, doesn't mm. work. So, we are a little bit sorry. That's yeah, a shame. We have tried to wing in with, several, uh, with different people, and we just end up together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it's unfortunate. I really hate it when it does that because that's one of the downsides of a three point eight is the fact that planetary instancing is often a nightmare. I mean, it's, sometimes it's really easy and sometimes it's really not, and it's impossible to predict it. That's the saddest part, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We we just learn to let you know we try. Yeah, okay. I mean, you can, you absolutely still should join us for the uh, the mass jump at the end. Just keep doing your own thing uh, down at this planet, but because okay. in space we have less problems instancing anyway. I'm mean, crossing my fingers as I say that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. You, that should definitely that happen. No problem. Well, that's yeah. the main thing, you know. As long as you have, as long as you have somebody else with you, that's the thing. Sometimes it does break down as you say into these smaller yeah. instances. But as long as there's somebody with you and you can have fun together. Well, that's that's yeah. really important. Right, yeah. let's look back. I do think I watched the environment. Hmm. That's good. Yeah, it gets a bit flatter after a while, but then I think it narrows up again. Let's go a bit further forward to see uh, if we can uh, JBL some eight kilometers ahead with the leading person and. Uh, Commander Blaster there is somewhere in the middle again of the pack, probably four kilometers away. See if I can find anyone else in the meantime, as I'm sort of slowly catching up with the pack. It's probably somebody else here in the middle. 
Oh, I think I see someone ahead, yeah. So that's Commander Blaster. Let's take a little cruise with them. <laughs> Doing good speed for an SRV. 30k plus. Sorry, 30 meters a second plus. Nine meters. <laughs> or oh, 12 meters now. Cruising around. <laughs> Sometimes you forget how big these ships actually are. Well, you definitely can't miss the Onyx ship. I think it's so bright red. <laughs> that is true. That is true. That, it's deliberately that color so it can be spotted easily. <laughs> Oh yeah, you definitely accomplished that. Yeah, that's literally from like making the mistake it was on definitely perfect for the limbo too. <laughs> making mistakes on the expeditions of having a black ship is like against a black background. It's like yeah, you're easy to spot with a black ship. It's like no. Yeah, here we go, cruising behind Commander Blaster for a bit. I think a JBL ship lane, Androcolo Bruta, Androcolo Bruta, is that another Roman derived name? <laughs> Right, let's go a little bit further forward, see who else we can find. You know, someone saying is it B eight, uh, yeah, saying that they hate rocks. It's like that's the thing. You you could be going along having a wonderful time, getting good speed up flying through the air and then you hit a rock randomly and get spun around like a spinning top. <clears throat> can you hitch a ride? Yeah, you can. Where are you? I'll stop for a second if you want. If you, I don't know if you can physically sit on my ship though, that's the thing. My ship's kind of the wrong shape for that. I don't mind people riding on it, but can you literally get on? Yeah. To fly upside down. I will get a little bit low. If anyone want, wants yeah. to get on top, they can, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's probably going to fall off pretty easily when I get up to speed. <laughs> Unless that's what you want. <laughs> Pre Caribbean Mollusk in the crew lounge is saying, I finally made it. Going to be in the bar in my undies. Have to burn the flight suit. It's like, wow, okay, fair enough. <laughs> the bar will be open oh, later. Uh, sound like a little bit TMI there. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But yeah, it's uh, has someone gone on top of uh, my ship? Let's have a look on the outside. Uh -huh. No one has at the moment, but yeah, if people want to try, they can. I wouldn't recommend it. Probably going to fall off very easily. <laughs> Yeah, no, the bar is always open on Endeavour, but I wouldn't recommend the drinks there. They're, they're very, very poor servers. They don't actually offer you drinks ever. It's like, well, why is there a bar here at all? You know, <laughs> it's like the running joke in Odyssey, isn't it? It's like, why is there a bar if you can only get like dodgy information and sell dodgy things? <laughs> That's like a secondary function of any bar, surely. <laughs> Oh dear. I mean, there's always yeah. someone else's drink on the on the counter, right? So. Yeah, that's what the strange thing is. It's like it's, it doesn't take much time or effort to make, you know, a little drink. You know, you could pick up or you know, give you a bottle or something, a little animation for it. 
Yeah. It would be nice. You know, it's not too much to ask. Is the person in the sidewinder with the SRVs with them, is that the very front of the line or is there people ahead of you? No, I think JBL is the front of the so line. to find out if I'm at the beginning. Yeah, JBL sidewinder is the front. The lead Okay. The lead group is at one seventy two point one six longitude. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't. I'm. I have. I fly in camera suite mode, so I can get the video. So mm -hmm. I can't see the coordinates. I'm just actually but, yeah. using your ships. The ships okay. that are flying around as landmarks. Yeah, the sidewind is definitely in the lead. Go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Go back and see who we got left. Oh, wait, I found one. Oh, no. Yeah, we got one little straggler here. No, make that two. I think the light's gradually getting less as we go uh, through the meet, but it's very gradual. I think up ahead, there's a section that does narrow a bit, not as much as before. It's, it's still odd. I can see the signal of Kit Osland moving, but that's all. So, a ghost in front of me. <laughs> yeah. It's sad. You get a lot of that when you can't instance with people. Yeah, you said you can see their signal, but you can't see them. It, it's irritating when that happens. Oh, there's a bunch of people yeah. there. Yeah, the it's front. It's just dead. Yeah. Uh huh. Here we go. Yeah, I'm getting. We got the uh, about four more stragglers coming up from where I'm at in the fighter. Ooh, one almost fell off the edge. Good save. I've got three in front of me here. We're having a lot of fun by the looks. Yeah, the SRVs, I want to get close, but not so close that I interfere with them by accident. <laughs> Couple more ahead. Here we are. Okay, so we got four, four in the back from the fighter. And big howdy to anyone out there watching in Twitch, in Twitchland. Welcome to the wonderfully, <laughs> wonderfully slightly chaotic but still wonderful uh, Horizons meetup of the Passage to Andromeda expedition. I am Commander Yannick, and 
We've got a bunch of SRVs on top of this wonderful little ice wall. She's several K between here and the ground below. Or, <coughs> or, or time limit? Or some such? Um, at the moment, we're very much sort of seeing what happens but we obviously there is like an upper time limit of like probably you know the closer we get to 20 hundred hours that's like the kind of vague time that we'll probably like end the meetup but we can keep doing things in the meantime if, if people get fed up of uh srv cruising around where well, we can definitely do other things but if everyone's still having fun then i'm uh more than happy to keep it rolling no i was just asking um like a marathon kind of yeah sort of oh no there goes the gold no someone fallen off no, man sorry. down he's trying to save himself oh wait oh yep he <laughs> he's, he did it that was close there you go right back in just two seconds See an SRV without wheels. Oh, now I can just disappear here there for a second. It looks like some of these rock ice rocks glow. Let's say the canyons nearby are fantastic. I'm with my fighter in the canyon. That's great. Nope, there they got yeah. one uh, sinking. Uh, 
who shouldn't have been following that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's a long way down. Holy crap, that is a really long way down. Yeah, I just fell for like, I think, 40 seconds or something. I don't know. No. Um, well, someone else that fell actually was able to get their ship recalled to that spot. So you might be able to get your ship. If you recall your ship, it might be able to come and land and pick you up. Yeah, yeah, it most likely will. Yeah. Damn, that's really high. All right, so that's just what leaves one in the lead up here. Uh, go back the other way. Where Yannick is, I think, is where the rest of them are. Where's everybody? Okay. So you have to go back to the start if you if you go off the ridge. Would be the longest meetup in history. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know if it's me or at this point, I'm only really seeing. Oh, it's the ground I'm seeing now. Uh, come on now. Let's grab onto that. <clears throat> oh. Spin. I'm not seeing anybody else. Let's have a look who's around. I've got you, Matrix Gamer, in uh, in sensor range, so you're around somewhere nearby. You should see me about now. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm trying to find where the rest of the SRVs are. Oh yeah, if you go back I down, you should encounter. Right some. now, I'm only seeing yeah. the ones up where the. Oh, were they down on the ridge? Uh, they should still be up here with us. It's just further back. Yeah. What's wrong, Comet Born? Have you fallen off again? Okay, I found one. Oh, Movada. Yeah. <laughs> it's unfortunate when that happens. That's why I invented the uh, this is an emoji for it. Where is it? There's a Movada emoji there. It has to try and drop it or somewhere. <laughs> there it is. back where I was because <laughs> that was bad. There we go. Right, who do we have ahead? We have Commander Just Burby, 
Get our stone room with plaster. I think I might be at the end. I got one straggler here with uh, just looks like a normal paint job or white. I don't know who that is, but I think that's the last one. Yeah. Now, just confirm you can definitely get out of uh, mass lock just by moving slightly to the side of the wall. So, yeah, we can definitely engage if we find the right star for mass jump. Should probably pick a place that's going to be like the end, as it were. Otherwise, we're going to go on forever, pretty much. <laughs> uh, this might be a good place to uh, to make it the end because it's like moderately flat. And I know it's a slight angle to it, but it's like moderately flat. So maybe where I am, I'm going to mark out as the sort of end of the road. Ooh, if I come in slightly too quick for my own good. <laughs> Uh, it happens sometimes. So halting yeah, here. Yeah, yep, okay. that, where JBL is now, um, and where my laser is. So if yeah. we say this is the end, because otherwise, yeah, we are going to yeah, go I on all night. Otherwise, <laughs> it'd be very easy to do that. Or, or so I was thinking of we could we can canyon cruise a little bit before we go to orbit. That might be a nice thing to do. Actually, not orbit, because as JBL suggested, I think it That'd is a nice. good idea to yeah. try and if we can actually engage uh, FSDs at this altitude. We should try. <laughs> Actually, I will look for a, an appropriate target system if I can. It's a good time to start looking for one. It's about now. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Okay. Right, it, so... so... Ooh. There's someone Where else in a nearby system. Is everybody? Panda Foz is in a completely different place. Ooh, okay, fair enough. Right. It's very slow at the moment. It's not responding very quickly. I don't know why that is. It's making it very difficult for me to pick on any system. I could just try on the uh, the targeting menu. It might be the easiest way. <laughs> Gotta laugh, really. Funny thing, we're on a planet full of geo signals. I've not even bothered to look at them. <laughs> I don't even see any SRVs. Oh, wait, no, there's one. Just no one has not everybody gotten to where all the ships are land part. Floating in parts. I, I think there were only two of us, two or three yeah. of us here. Not quite there yet. That's fine. They say that we're not really racing for this one, so just uh, take your time. It's not a problem. Yeah. trying to uh, see what our trajectory is relative to the surface. Hmm. In some ways, for like planetary scouting, this is like one of the best ships you could have because it's fast in a straight line. <laughs> and you sometimes need that to go from place to place. Mm, that's pretty good. It's not amazing, but it might do nicely. Ooh, do we have a new follow? 
Oh yeah, hey, hey killer unknown. Sorry, killer clown. Sorry. Yep, O seven amigo. How goes exploration? Very well, thank you. We're having a good time here. Yeah, we're having fun at the uh, ice walls here in the distant areas of the galaxy, <laughs> as you do. Some people have fallen off. Some people have uh, managed to not fall off and uh, had a great time anyway. I think even the people falling off had a good time, to be fair. <laughs> uh, there is a certain joy plummeting several kilometers down to the uh, icy surface below. Hmm. That's not too bad, actually. Only two repairs. Two repairs and twenty-eight percent when I got to the bottom. Yes. Okay. Might not be perfect, but I think it's, I found probably a good jump target for us. We're not forming up just yet, but I'm just looking ahead. Um, yeah. Yeah, if anyone has a, like, you know, red, uh, sorry, Movada or Scarlet Crate, there's uh, little emojis in the Discord for that. Movada being obviously the most uh, regular one that we seem to have. Wow. So, that's a lot killer clown. 94 system. Mm, that's cool. So do you jump? What's, what's the target? Oh, oh yeah, we're not so funny. I'm just I'm just literally picking a jump target. So uh I'll put it in the chat in a second, but I think we're just waiting for everyone to catch up firstly. Cuz a lot of people are still on the oh, wall and two. coming. All right. Where I'm at here, I got two over here. So I see what the laser yeah, is, yeah. They are away. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've come out of lubber here, and that's it. Comet Braun was here, but he cuts himself more hmm. far. jump towards the nebula we could but we had to get a lot more altitude to do that right across the horizon so yeah it's it's not quite high enough above the horizon for us to jump directly into it so that's why i was trying to think for a different target i mean we can do that but yeah i mean who would prefer to jump to at this altitude across or who wants to jump to the nebula because we'd have to gain quite a bit of height to do that Um, yeah, to suggestions. Like 21 kilometers. Mm -hmm. I don't mind, but if, if we're going to jump from here, I will try and wing in Zock and Popper mm -hmm. again if that's of interest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I go. Actually, considering the numbers of people. Have I missed most of the event and you're just now? Have we... I missed most of the event and you're just. We are thinking of mass jumping in the next sort of twenty minutes or so. Okay. But if you can get here before then, then uh, absolutely do. Um, but you say we're not going to jump just yet. We're waiting for lots of other people All to right. come across the ice wall as well. So we're just sort of thinking ahead at the moment and thinking aloud of uh, what our options are. Oh, okay. Uh, then let me switch ships to something appropriate here. Hold on a moment. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it will we'll be. So, Kumpupa, what, what are you going to do? Uh, if you'd like to bring me in, that's okay. I'm a super cruise just above the, the planet. Okay. Cool. We can try. Maybe mm -hmm. it's worth this time. I've sent you an invitation. Thank you, I see. Right. Well, there's oh, quite a... Um, just check that my... My beacon is on. Yeah, I see.
Who was in that other instance yeah. with you? Uh, Commander Labber and Comet Braun. Mm -hmm. I see Comet Braun well, I saw him seconds ago. Okay. Uh... I just see there's no wait. You guys are getting closer. Here's where we are right now. <clears throat> the la okay, the last two. that's fine. Let's see the ship. It looks like it was a problem to uh, wing on the SREs. The signals were always under SRE. Oh, uh, yes. I sent you the invitation when I was in my SRV. Yeah. The first time. So that might, it might be the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once you've reached okay. the end, then you can see the other ships. Uh, just recall your ship as quickly as you can. I think there's a few more SRVs still on the way. Or at least a couple more. I think these are the last two where the laser is. Cool, that's pretty close, actually. So, yeah, that, that's good timing. <clears throat> Look around this wonderfully coloured, but kind of you know, beautiful but desolate sort of frozen, frozen world. It's mostly water ice, I think, isn't it? Or is it? position. <laughs> It's definitely dramatic. The only shame is that there aren't any of those uh, geysers or uh, volcanic sort of action going up fermials in the middle of these ice walls. That would be even more fun. <laughs> we melt the ice wall though, wouldn't it? Someone's doing a no stand down there. That would be actually cool if they made it that realistic. That like if you shot your lasers into a really icy planet, that it would actually burrow a hole. Yeah. In, you know, even if it was just a small one, that yeah. would be uh, pretty cool. It would. And there I go again. I think at some be... point, well, it's just having the computing power or having the attention to detail, isn't it? <laughs> Because there's lots of things that, even with the PCs we have and the servers we have, that, that could be done. It just requires a lot more time and effort than most companies are willing to spend. But I suppose so, sooner or later someone will do it, you know. Yeah. It's a sad point here. Sorry, could so you say? my SRV, but there's a bunch of. Oh, um, I got to the point where there's a bunch of uh, ships up in the air. Is yeah, this, this is the end yes, point. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is. Uh, recall your ship, cool. and uh, we'll get ready for going to jump. Just to make sure that everyone. Did everybody get in their ships already? I don't no, no, still, still SRVs people here, left. still SRVs yeah. exactly. We're waiting for every all the SRVs are finished before we do that. And leave no one behind. Well, I should be able to join you again. I'm just uh, slipping to something a little more comfortable. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm trying to find out where the, where, where is all the SRVs that are still here. Or how... I can't find them. We could potentially have everyone finished because there's a couple who just arrived here now. So that may be the case. Got quite a few ships who are off the What's ground. What's the... Uh... Oh, there's a fleet carrying there. There's I can. Is it slow? Are you near the Nexus? Yeah. Or uh, we're on a, a, a different world. Um, uh, seeing the the chat for uh, the coordinates, but I'll, I'll try and log you in, uh, Logan, if you want. Okay, hold on, just a moment here. I found the actual. Called my ship and it took back off again. <laughs> Interesting. That's a bit rude of it, isn't it? Just to leave without I you. I see half the things. <laughs> it's 
Jesus. I was in camera mode this whole time, and, You're, and um... I didn't see anything. And now when I'm starting, when I switch back to ship, you know, in the cockpit, now I see more ships and SRVs. That uh... was weird. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gwen, it sometimes helps to drive a little bit away from a group of ships. Um, if your ship doesn't land or flies away again. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Logan, I sent okay. you a wing yeah, invite. Yeah, I can oh, cool. your wing here. Awesome. Right. Give me a moment here. Let me can I get a wing invite one. as well? Okay. Sure, I'll do that. Cool. Wing. There we go. Got it. All right. Auto launch. I'm bringing it, uh, my, one of my anacondas, but not the usual one. Mm -hmm. This will be the last time we uh, have a mass jump in this instance of the game. Yeah. I thought it'd be appropriate to bring the Ashanti High Lightning. This is the ship that, I've, that I first went on uh, Distant Worlds 2 on. Oh, yes. He's think... semi-retired as an exploration vessel, but uh, we'll use her for combat and uh, in bubble activities. Hmm. It's unusual people use explorers as combat uh, vessels. I suppose they can be, but it's just that people tend to keep them separate. But, you know, whatever works for you. I, I, I've tended to keep mine completely separate wherever possible. Mm -hmm. Well, this one started off as as uh, explore exploration, but I made the infinite sky into my uh, dedicated exploration ship. So I decided to go ahead and uh, make this one into my uh, more, you know, regular yeah. like, like uh, community community goal ship kind of thing. Oh, cool. Uh, Commander Lobber is actually asking for a wing invite as well. If someone can... I have a full wing right now, so I can't bring in any more people. I see them. Cool. Thank you. Some cool images going up already. Thank you for those. To be fair, for to hang around, this is a good place to be hanging around. <laughs> it's certainly not boring. There we go. Guess. Myself here and go to external camera. Ooh, that's nice. Some beautiful ships here today. Yeah, I like a shirt. <laughs> we do. Uh, we, we have something completely different on its way into Okay. So you, yeah, you will get one guess about which ship I'm turning up in. Um, uh, something it's... unconventional. Uh, assault ship. Yeah, pretty close. <laughs> Federal gunship. Oh. Yep. You got it, Kit. <laughs> yeah, that's an unconventional explorer for sure. You don't see many of them out in these parts. Once in a while, you'll see someone trying something unconventional. Yeah, it was either going to be that or a cube. Yeah. 
It was either going to be that or a T10. Yeah. And I'm not sure the T10 has the range for a mass jump. <laughs> yeah. I guess it would if I injected it. True, true. I suppose like pre um FSD boosters, yeah, you would get expeditions where the odd masochist would like bring a type nine just yeah, and then do like thousands of jumps when everyone else was doing hundreds of jumps. It was uh it was I'm glad I wasn't that person put it that way. <laughs> yeah. I had someone bring a type nine on the eastern course all the way out to um Magellan. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think with the carriers, though, it just makes it so much easier to bring whatever you want to a meet, I suppose. You don't have to have flown the distance in there. Hang on, did I just drop it on oh, the yeah. side of the planet? It appears to have been an awfully long way away. Yeah, it's a pity that the, um, the wing beacon, the wing signal, doesn't go dashed when it's yep. not in a direct line of sight. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But yeah, I don't think Frontier ever really designed the uh, the multiplayer to be more than maybe between four to eight commanders. I think beyond that, they never really thought anyone would bother. And it's like, well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> but players will always do this. They'll always yeah, push the system uh, as far as they can. You've you know? got a game where you can... Of course. You've got a game where you could essentially assemble a fleet you're, we're going to assemble fleets. Oh yeah, hell yeah! I think we've long said this. It would have been well, wonderful to have like a central server, even if you could like buy time, well, or have a time slices. It'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine like doing like a two hundred ship meet or something like that, where no one would fall out of an instance? That would be just magical and chaotic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'd be fun though. Especially for mass jumps. And like this the record like was it a hundred and fifty ships or something like that? And that was a long time ago. And uh yeah, two hundred ships would be quite spectacular. The good old Imperial Cutter. The miner's dream. Speaking of instant stability, I yep. got your wing signal about seven, about six hundred and forty-nine meters away from me, and I don't see you. Okay, can you see anyone? I do see another guy. I just came in. Okay. Just flew right in front of me, but I don't see you. Uh, who was it? At the moment, I am with uh, Sock and Pup, Kit, Sato, B8, Gwen, Matrix Gamer, those people. Um, it's possible the game's creating two instances again, which yeah, would surprise me. I, I had the yeah. same problem when I low waked out and back, and it fixed it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do here. Cool. At one point it said we were 23 meters apart <laughs> and I'm flying a cutter so that was a bit sketchy. Yeah. You're in a parallel reality to them. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm coming on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm coming on a, a different instance as well. But yeah. Probably um, just meet up out in orbit. I presume we're going out into orbit pretty soon. Yeah, we were trying to like do the sort of jump near the planet. If we can't, if we have instancing problems that continue, we'll just probably go to orbit and try it there instead. Because I'd rather actually like this one to be everyone together than uh, having two separate jumps. Yeah, it defeats the point really. Actually, should we just go to orbit instead of just solve a lot of our problems? Mm -hmm. So uh, let's uh, ascend. Because that way we can definitely go back to the the waypoint mm -hmm. nebula as well. So up we go. To orbit everyone. 
Yeah, we'll try and work out all the instancing when we get there. But yeah, clear the planet by a fair way before we do anything else. Because obviously the planet is usually causing a lot of the problems with instancing. and Yeah. One of those things, if you have a near planetary like, <laughs> jump, yes. it's nice if you can get it. You can't always get it, but... <laughs> Well, out here in uh, Super Cruise, I am seeing a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. cool. Oh, so I need a wing in, like, please, Matrix, so I don't want to lose everybody once we get out of this. No worries, we'll, we'll try to leave no one behind for this. We're, once we actually get a settled uh, space in orbit, we'll uh, we'll try and bring everyone in then. I have a full wing as it is anyway, so uh, give a couple of minutes and then we'll try that. Okay. So, yeah. And it will come in on your low wake when you cool. found somewhere. I was going to say, this is, one of the major differences I was noticing in space between this and Odyssey is it's always super bright because of all the trails, but you can barely see anyone else. The tiny little specks, you know, of trails in Odyssey. And it's it's, it's such a huge shift, like one extreme to the mm -hmm. other. Like, in, you could argue in Horizons the ships are too bright, the trails, but in Odyssey yeah. they're actually too dim. <laughs> oh, was something it's funny. I was about to say I'm not gonna miss probably. Go for it. Being blinded. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. You've got yeah, a lot of that is something there. that I'm gonna miss from Horizons. I kind of like the brightness of the uh, the super ships and super crews. I mean, it yeah. does obscure th you know things sometimes, but I think it looks better. Yeah. It actually <laughs> looks like from uh, blinding the. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, I, I posted what my screen looked like with all the dots. I'm trying to find it. What the heck? Close Encounters. Doesn't this, it, like the picture I posted looks like Close Encounters from of the third kind, I think it was. The, okay. The, the yeah, I get, I, get, I get what you're saying, yeah. All that makes sense. Dots and blinding. <laughs> uh, you've got to laugh. <laughs> you've got to laugh at all of that. Right, I am trying to get a good shot through. Just bear with me a second. I have an idea in mind. I just have to get the right angle the for way it. I fight. Right. I did finally see the actual... Uh, they have. They still have the model of the mothership from Close Encounters. Uh, Adam Savage from Mythbusters was uh, looking at it, and he finally found... The little spot on that ship where they had a tiny little R2D2. Yeah. <laughs> and so they actually had that and uh, focused in on it, and uh, you were actually able to see it. Mm -hmm. That sounds cool. <laughs> Making little I'd details never, like I'd that. I'd never yeah. actually seen it before. Right. I'd never actually seen it before, but now that I knew what to look for, I looked at a, at a copy of the film again. <laughs> So I can see the angle, so I can see it at the proper angle, and yeah, there it is. You just don't recognize it for what you're looking at, unless you already have seen it in static mode. Yeah. If that makes any sense. It does, yeah. But it's amazing the sort of detail that some people put into their works. It's, uh, it's extraordinary, really. Oh, yeah. And of course, Spielberg and Lucas being friends and all, I'm, I'm sure they allow such pranks with each other to, to occur uh, commonly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. As long as it does not work in, uh, in the song uh, Money for Nothing. <laughs> you know, Sting was just jumping in and then uh, his company want money because he sang and the singing a song. Okay, uh, you can drop on my wing now, on my signal. I found a nice place. Okay, got it. Uh, down. Uh, which side of the ring? The other side of the ring from where you probably were coming from. I, I said you have to be careful. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah Best, if, if in, in doubt, you. always go around the outside of the ring. Yeah. Yeah, I think <laughs> right. Okay. I have a couple of people with me already. Uh, Okay. Right. Else thing else in. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna wait to. I'll drop out of this wing in a second once uh, Logan and Strapcast have arrived. Yeah. Which uh, system are you in? We're in the meeting system at the moment, but we're heading. The target will be the waypoint system, the Nebula. Oh. Go to Discord and look for the uh, for the address listed in the uh, meetup info. But once you're here, mm -hmm. um, ask for a wing invite and uh, uh, just follow the wing beacons. In. Yeah. If it helps, um, we're uh, uh, at the gas giant that the moon that was listed as the uh, gathering point was at. We're uh, gathering above one of uh, the ring. If that helps. Yeah, the uh, the target system is the waypoint system, which is Jumeu GN dash S E4 dash 18, which is 14.4 light years away. But yeah, as you say, it's like the uh, the details for the meetup should be the meetup system is in announcements and it also should be here uh, in Horizon's voice text chat as well. Sorry, and Horizon's meetup info, I should say. Okay, Strapcast is here. Logan's on his way. Uh, I've got JBL, Sato, Comet, Born, Luba, Matrix, Canis. Uh, cool. I think everyone's building it nicely. Oh, I think I clipped somebody as I came in. Yeah. It's very Sorry rude software, that. isn't it? I mean, the thing is, no one wants I, to do that. They just, the software always I does that to you. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will now leave this particular wing. Oh, it was right before it happened. I'll try and wing you in, get it done. <laughs> Yep. I think Gethador is looking for a way. Right, so just everybody that's coming in, Matrix and the purple crate is the filming. So I'm, I'm, I would be the the very very back. So everyone would. Okay. If anyone new comes in, go in front of me. Purple four. Okay. Right. <clears throat> So anyone else who needs a wing? Ah, oh, it's Von Trap here. Are you sure? <laughs> Soaking Pupa all the time. <laughs> You're, right. You're asking me? Whoever likes to wing me in. I have sent out okay. some wing invites. Yep, uh, that's right. B8 Thank waypoint you. system is oh. target. Yeah, that's correct. Got not so obvious in Super Cruise with me. So winging me in. Commander South Sea, Canis, Matrix, with Kuna. Yeah, I, map, I think. Basically pointed back towards the carrier. You guys don't seem to be pointed at the waypoint system in my. Mm, it should be. It's the nebula. It's pretty easy to spot. It mm. should all be in the same direction. I mean, at least I, I'm not looking backwards just yet towards anyone. But, oh, um... I know what it is. Yeah, hang on. Um, I was using the carrier as a reference, but actually, it's not it, is it? Um... No, no. Yeah, it's, the carrier has it... moved. For yeah. The, <laughs> for the Odyssey event. Okay. Which was then abandoned, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah. did originally genuinely intend to have both events. It's just that obviously there were three people for Odyssey and. Um, Where is that thing? 
I ought to be able to. I ought to be able to see the nebula in the galaxy map, but I'm not seeing it. Can okay. somebody post the system we're aiming at in the chat, maybe? Uh, yeah, it should be there. It's even the Horizon it voice text there. chat. Yeah, yeah. Shijumio GN dash S E4. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, so you've got the little uh, purple ship down there. Purple dolphin. And if all else fails, I can always just... Yeah. I think the cutter's pointing in the wrong direction. But... Do it this way. <laughs> that black beluga is an interesting look. Yeah, I think okay. this blaster is pointing somewhere else. There we go. And just now, right. right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a nice shot. I think. Now we're at Odyssey. Od we're at it. Odysseus is rest, right? We're at waypoint eleven. That is right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I'm just using. I'm just going straight to the. Uh, <laughs> the page at EDSM for it, and I'm going to go ahead and post that. Yeah. So, no, I'm just laughing at the know, irony. He didn't actually struck me to know. Bing, but, um, there you, there you go. Yeah. Odysseus's rest where we have no Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. Hey ho. I didn't think about it that way until just now. Yeah, it is somewhat ironic, but hey ho. Black helicopters well, would be twentieth century. Way, by, the, by, the, by the time we're, we're uh, by the time the week is over, we will have nothing but an Odyssey to go. This is true. This is very much the case. Trying to get some more cool shots of this. Yeah. There we go. Can look as epic as possible from every angle. <laughs> well, that's always the key uh, to sort of formation photography or ship mm -hmm. photography. Even if it's only a few ships, make it look as epic as possible. Now, this is a good collection of ships, so it can be even more epic. I think the dolphin is pointed at a weird angle as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm not... Huh. Oh yeah, this is good. Getting the. Uh, I, I realized I, I realized I actually still had you targeted when I popped my uh, hard points. And I was like, no, 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 do not shoot at the <laughs> ender. Yeah, that that it's not a great look, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, bad form, bad form. Yeah, yeah. Save that for the after party. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. There will be time for the shenanigans but, later on, so don't worry about that so much. There is a time and a place for shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. Now, the black beluga is very good against the sky in terms of camouflage in certain places. So It's uh, it's very nice. You don't see too many black belugas. The actually. rings make a good backdrop if you scroll up a bit. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to like different angles at the moment, an external camera to sort of get the best view of... Uh, of the situation, so we're all sort of. You see the ring, you see the nebula, you see the ships. So eighteen ships here. Is that everyone? That's. Pretty good. Is, are we I don't waiting know if it's for everyone? But it's a good number. It's a very good number. Waiting for anybody else to come in at the moment. Uh, in chat, is, uh, if anyone else isn't on voice, can you tell me if you need to get in? Uh, Nineteen in VC. Okay, that's probably true. Um, we'll give it a few minutes oh, anyway, just to make sure, just in case oh, we are okay. missing anybody. There's only 19 people in the chat, so there you go. It probably is everyone. Yeah. yeah. I probably need to go in fives. Hmm, okay. All right, let's have a quick look. I'm going to scroll down my uh, friends just to make sure that 
There's no one else to really get in that we need. Anyone remember Black Hauler Down? Get it, I say. <laughs> and no, I don't think I do, but <laughs> it would be funny. Okay, um, I think if that's everybody, shall we say jump at uh, 20. 07, that gives us uh, about a minute and a bit to get ourselves in order. Sure thing, yeah. Sounds good. So to be clear, it's throttle forward and then charge? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, throttle zero. Throttle zero, tr um, charge Spool. the FSD, <clears throat> and then on the count of zero, full throttle, no, no boost. Yeah. Landing gear up great. and scoop. Um, someone you, always does boost, though. They always the first out of the in, in which... Yeah. 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 I think it's one of the amusing things. FSD's charging around me. Right, okay. About 45 seconds to go. Yeah, spool up if you haven't you already. Know, your FSD's. I think Gordon's. Prepare to jump. I think when I get back, when I get all my ships uh -huh. in Horizons back to the bubble, I think I'll leave all my racing ships, the Horizons racing ships, at Poma at Pomesh. Twenty seconds. Okay, stand by, stand by. Right, ready for count in ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, hit it. No one overtook me. <laughs> so the second time that's ever happened. <laughs> Whoever that was, that was that was threading the formation in their uh, courier. Nicely done. I, I had to weave more than I normally have to. <laughs> Jostling for position. Eh? Well, it certainly made made for an interesting image. Yeah. Uh, I did wonder for a second because for a moment, usually Excellent. someone overtakes me. And I thought, has my voice failed again? Because it it did once early in the expedition. But thank goodness it didn't. <laughs> uh. Yeah. It's a beautiful place this it really is. Oh. Yeah. This is the thing, whichever carrier you dock with now, be um be mindful obviously because Intrepidus and obviously Endeavour are the ones that are gonna continue forward to Star One and then Endeavour will bring you back. Uh with my own carrier is like I'm probably gonna continue forward with it in Odyssey and I might just leave it here in the horizon at least for now I'm not 100% sure but the Odyssey one will definitely be going forward yeah. but yeah it's Tuesday the update's due so yeah if wherever you're going to to dock actually I, what I might do is I might actually uh, dock let me see what's the best way to do this it doesn't really matter so much for my own personal carrier but uh, I recommend most people yeah dock on in Intrepidus or on uh or an endeavor because uh, I say like I wouldn't recommend my carrier anyway because it doesn't have much of the way of facilities. <laughs> it's pretty threadbare in there. Yeah. When is uh in is endeavor leaving as normal the yep. next day or is he leaving today? Yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll follow my normal pattern about seven okay. o'clock tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. okay. And then just uh, since everybody's here for the uh, for the last one. And going back to the bubble, are are you going to keep the same schedule or your wait after a day after before you make the jump back to the bubble, uh, or will you be doing um, it the same no, day? No, most likely I will. I will wait. Okay. Yeah. I'll Where's have to have that? a really big bowl of porridge because it's seventy-three <laughs> jumps back. Yeah, I was going to say, I wasn't joking when I, I yeah, salute the heroism of, of the of you guys, the Intrepidus and uh, Endeavour carrier owners, because you have a huge task, and I, I genuinely take my head off to you for doing oh, you're so. you're right. Yeah. It's 146 jumps, in fact, yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
but that, that would actually be good anyways because they're i mean i already, i've been riding on the endeavor the whole time but maybe not everybody else so that gives them more time to be able to transfer their stuff in case it's not close yeah endeavor has been my day. home carrier most of the expedition and i've switched over to intrepidus for a couple of hops but um mostly i leave my ships on endeavor and just for you know just travel by myself between waypoints mm -hmm. yeah that's understandable that's what i was expecting most people to to do which is why i, I just sort of dash ahead yeah, yeah. It's worked out quite well because Intrepidus tends to bring up the rear, and obviously Endeavour tends to be the foremost carrier. So that, that works quite nicely for everyone, I think. I'm trying to work out why yeah, I've actually got this bookmark in this system. There must be some reason for it, but maybe there isn't. <laughs> there uh, is one. I think it's quite luxurious to have like more than one carrier on an expedition. There was one it's good if you can, yeah. trip out to. Uh, Beagle Point, where I jumped a, about a third of the way on Endeavor, hopped off, went through about a half of the remaining trip, just um, getting a whole bunch of uh, uh, bio scanning done, and then Intrepidus was coming up behind, and I decided, well, I'll just go ahead and hop on the Intrepidus and ride that all the way back in, because it was getting towards the end there. Uh, I started with Endeavor, and then I switched all my stuff to Intrepidus. Found it more practical to have it at hand on the way. Oh yeah, Intrepid Intrepidus was definitely shipped to uh, carrier to be on if you were taking the scenic route. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now I, I have done the, the POI point of interest route, and. Sometimes I switch the ships or something like that, and it was better to have it on Intrepidus finally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, if I'm on my expedition ship and the mining is somewhere else, <laughs> it was a little bit useless. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, um... I get my mining ship on the uh, Endeavor. Yeah. That, that that's what I have done first, and so, but I need days to get up. I was going to ask, is so it there Endeavor? There was not much mining on the way. Oh, is Endeavor going to make an appearance in the uh, waypoint system uh, in the near sort of next couple of hours or so, or is it going to stay where it is at the moment? Oh, yeah, I probably will return to the waypoint system just because that's where my um, my waypoint routes are plotted from. Um, would you prefer that to be done fairly soon? Uh, preferably, only just to pick up all the other commanders as well who want to be on it. Um, that's pretty much the only reason, to be fair. But, yeah, that would be cool. It's a very pretty nebula, this. Okay. Don't know how many people from the meeting are coming back now. I'll hang around a while and jump, say, at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. Cool. That sounds like a reasonable compromise there. It was just su suggested to do some mining for Intrepidus, maybe? If anyone is still up for that. Oh yeah, I mean you're always uh, it's always an open thing if you want to well, do mining for Intrepidus, then uh, please do. <clears throat> well, it's pretty certain yeah. the last time I checked, Intrepidus doesn't have enough tritium to get back to the bubble, mm. so some oh. mining is needed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm gonna park this ship on Endeavor, and I'm gonna bring over my mining ship, uh, in the same system that Intrepidus is in. I just chose the location that Kit posted the other day. This one, this system there has tritium to mine, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, is that, yeah. Is that uh, Jumo FT OB39 6? Yes. Oh, never mind. 
it says mining. Okay, yeah, I've got mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. how long will Intrepidus stay here at this system? Well, I think Intrepidus is here till tomorrow, right? Ah, uh, I can't do mining tomorrow. Today it's too late. Um, I'm in a different time soon. I don't actually know. I think it's Intrepid it tends to leave evening. later than an, um, Endeavor anyway, doesn't it? So I'm not sure when it, exactly when it's leaving. Hmm. Uh huh. So you've probably got a good chance of if you want well, to stay. I might be able to do some later tonight. I, I have to do some stuff for the next couple of hours after this is over, but during the nighttime, I could probably be drop in some mining if it's going to be staying overnight. Mm hmm. Oh, there's some good shots here, definitely, okay, in images. Let me bring my... Yeah, this, I went, I, I kind of went overboard on all my screenshots besides the video I was running the whole time, but because since this was the very last one, I just had to go overboard. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, I, I'm more oh, than merrier, yes. really. As long as they're cool shots, I don't mind where they come from and how many of them you put out there. It's all good. Just looking at the nebula from the carrier here, and then you see there's another nebula in the distance as well. I think that's a bigger nebula though than this one. This is a planetary nebula, so it's a bit smaller. Yeah, this next at one's BE8 stuff is really good as well. Matrix got some cool stuff. Yeah, I took a lot of shots. I haven't posted them yet. Yeah. Comet born also. Well done. Good stuff. Uh get to do it, yeah. That's some cool image. So if you're if you're playing in high like four K resolution and you do a high res screenshot, does it actually take the screenshot in that same resolution or is it just this it's topped out at a certain resolution when you do a high res screenshot? Four K. I'm not sure what the resolution limits are for screenshots. High res. How high is high res high, though? That's high the res thing. Screenshots are... Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure. That's what I was asking. Yeah. Personally, I'm not sure what the they actual are limit are. K... I think Sato was trying to tell us. Yeah, I think my my high res screenshots are 16k too. Let me check the other ones. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I'll get back to you in a second. Yeah, the information is out there somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, I, yeah. I haven't checked uh, what my screenshots are at right now, but this will be the first time I've taken screenshots while playing in 4K, so I was kind of curious. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, I'm sure it's different in, in Horizons versus Odyssey. So... Let's see. Um, is it where um, is the mining going to take place? Where Strapcast is right now, mm -hmm. or is it going to be in the nebula? I don't know. So the high res resolution is fifteen k to eight and a half k. Okay. Okay, so then, nice all right, so it's, yeah, mine went to 12 to 88 eight by 6912. 24-bit mm -hmm. depth is that all of the, the screenshots. I just oh, went and checked out one of them. Oh, my God. That's a pretty Oh, pretty there's definitely no, Oh, there's definitely no mining to be done in that system. Yeah. Mm. But over here, I wonder if... Who is the one that said their screenshots? Did you get that from what you did, or did you find an article that said what No, no, what I checked it is? my screenshots. This was a Horizon screenshot from just now. A high, high mm, nice. And yours uh, was what, again? Uh, 15k times eight, eight and a half. Yeah, like... Okay, and you're playing in what resolution? In Horizons in 4K and in Odyssey in 2K. Interesting. When, but when you say 4K, are you doing it by um, 
thirty sixty by ten or by twenty one sixty, I think is what it is. Uh, three eighty three thirty eight forty, I mean, or fourteen forty. Because they, I think they can still consider fourteen forty four K. You mean my four uh, K resolution? Yeah. Uh, three eighty four times two. One six. One sixty. Okay. Interesting. I wonder why. I'm in. I'm running the same exact. It's but my high res shots are coming out to twelve two two eight by six nine one two. To scale. I'm sorry. Do you have your mo monitor scaled? Uh, no, not in the in the settings. Yeah, it should be at one hundred percent in the in the Windows. I'm settings. doing Queen I'm settings. doing borderless full screen. So, yeah, that, that, yeah, you have on, on the window and Windows screen settings. Mm -hmm. You can scale. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, okay. So I'm I'm running to three eighty four, that's uh, three eight four zero to one uh, two thousand one hundred sixty, and my screen resolution comes to the fifteen whatever to eight. Yeah. Hmm. And I run uh, full what whatever full means on on uh, a liter. Elite. Yeah, I'm running in uh, yeah, ultra um, everything. One trap. Yeah, just, just pointed out that that, that the high res resolution uh, is uh, independent of the game render resolution because mm -hmm. my audio screenshots are the same resolution. Okay, that's a good point. Actually, so that is like true. Yeah. Oh, that's actually pretty good though. And maybe that's something what is dependent of of, of the graphic or something like that so this is some internal rendering or maybe just max resolution that it i don't know maybe just yeah no but that's a good point though because that means that you could still you could if you can't go at a higher resolution when you play but when you take high you can take high res screenshots it'll give it'll give you better quality picture than what you're playing in yes so that that's a good point I, and good to know Huh. See, Logan's having issues with his limpets. This is gonna matter. <laughs> yes, I forgot the bloody limpets. Ah, <laughs> uh, the joys uh, of mining. You have, you have permission to laugh at me. It's the joys of mining yeah, all over. It's the easiest I'm, thing to I'm do. So get your limpets. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I, I you know. Whenever I, I don't usually fly with limpets, I, I get plenty of ma materials to create them on the fly. That's yeah. good enough if you're doing hull seal repairs. But I want to actually get limpets if I'm mining. Sure. Yeah. God. What a dumbass thing for me to do. Well, I mean, it happens. I mean, I wish there was some kind of like, like a post it note if, to buy in the, in the <laughs> library, just to stick on your cockpit. It would be great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, if you have the if you have the HSV the voice packs, it, it, if you take off and don't have limpets, it, it warns you. It says you are forgetting your limpets. Would you like to cancel the launch? <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Uh, remember in Apollo thirteen when they uh, discover that. Well, this happened in real life where the guy had ta had taped over the release switch for the uh, uh, ejecting the lunar module with a big no <laughs> <laughs> gotta do that though. and, 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 oh, going, man, looks like and they're like what was that all about he goes well I, I haven't had a whole lot of sleep the last few days i was getting a little punchy didn't want to take a chance good thinking <laughs> yeah yeah i actually just noticed i was i the screen was scaled by 125 percent okay i had to look uh, further down in the settings to see that i thought i had it set to 100 percent because it does make a difference because i when i changed it to 100 it was the size you what yours was uh, so 
more cool shots coming and, in. It, and it's actually visually different i didn't think that was that would affect it nice shots there rumors blaster I like the one of the jump at the yeah, top. Yeah, it's a beautiful system. Exactly, and then the one uh, below the planet, uh, the waypoint planet with the uh, the pink sort of and blue. That's a really funny looking planet, anyway. But it's a really good one. That's uh, that shot with the old cutter. That's very cool. That's my new background. <laughs> oh yeah, worthy uh, addition to your background, definitely. But yeah, this is it's a beautiful background and a beautiful planet. That one. And there's a lot of good-looking uh, planetary nebulas. Uh, I do like the color sort of balance of this one. It's very nice. Yeah, I parked on Pantheon temporarily. Are on. we going to... Uh... Well, we're getting a little mining party together here for uh, doing some mining for tri tritium. Uh, look in the... Uh... The text for the voice com line for a little bit more details. Mm -hmm. So you're on audio, or in we're stick slides. we're sticking with horizons for now, since we're already here. Mm -hmm. So Arthur says there's no uh, audio. I'm just checking screen resolution and that's mining. Hmm. Might might be a little bit late for today. So conversion. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do some tonight, probably after midnight Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> it's gonna be a, a short mining run for me now. Yeah. 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 Any and all uh, tritium mine, please send it towards uh, Intrepidus. Yeah. There we go. Old full of limpets, ready to mine. There we go. Now, it's a shame you can't walk around on the surface of a carrier in Odyssey. It seems to be quite limited where you can actually walk. You walk anywhere on a planet, but you can't walk outside your ship. It's like, well, what, what the hell? <laughs> you know. That is kind of uh, odd. Mm hmm. I mean, you've got magnetic boots. Why not? Yeah. Wait, what are you saying? You know, on the are deck you guys of the joking, or are you... you know the deck of the carrier when you're outside no, in not space. Not really a joke, although. No, it's no. Kind of... You know, you you know, in Odyssey, yeah. you can walk around inside the carrier in the hangar, <laughs> but you can't walk around on the deck outside before you go down. It'd be nice if you could, just so you could literally walk around the outside oh, okay. so of, talking... of the carrier. Yeah. But I don't know why you oh, can't do the, that. That's the part I missed. That, that would have been nice, you know. Cause it, uh, no, yeah, for sure. Well, I have a feeling it has to, it has to do with the uh, perceived uh, potential for abuse. Because you, <laughs> you, know, you, you know somebody's going to Yes, try yes, that's why I'm laughing. Because you know what Well, happened. we've already had that you know happen I mean? before, but not the way they're supposed to. <laughs> that's what happens though. As you write people will you know abuse that's it. Happen. That's Somebody's why I'm laughing. Hundred and... percent that's why I'm laughing. Yeah. Yeah. Well we already had now, the, uh who was the person that kept jump kept glitching himself outside that we, we that we were just like having fun with? Uh I can't remember who it was. Uh it was one of the guys that uh, or people that didn't talk in the this they were in the discord voice channel but they didn't talk but he used when we were like hanging out in the command deck he yeah would, he would 
glitch through. You know what I'm talking about, right? I, I can't, can't remember, remember who it was. was, but I do remember that it was going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Might as well get my mining stuff together at least until... Now, if you had, like, a full maneuverability rating on your, uh, on the, uh, on your vacuum suit, where you could, uh, just fly around, where, you know, however you want, and yeah. it doesn't actually affect anything unless you, part, you know, get in front of a ship and <laughs> you get what you, you get what you deserve there, <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Oh, yes, right now, the only things our uh, backpack can do is just allow us to jump. I don't think it's a full maneuverability thing, you know? You're right. Yeah, that's true. It's just literally one direction, isn't it? You can't maneuver yourself around like you could. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's a shame, really. I mean... Now that... Yeah. Now that's... I mean, I understand it looked like, you know, if we go for a full sort of EVA. If we want to go for a full spacesuit for EVAs, it wouldn't be too tricky to do the mechanics for that, you know. To have a little bit of maneuvering, you know, for the thrusters. Use the very similar kind of model that you have for a spacecraft, just tone it down a bit, you know. So, you know, the little jetpack is only going to be a fraction of the power of a Sidewinder or something, you know. It wouldn't be too tricky, you would think. But, you know. It's uh, it's something that they should really work on if they're, if they're really serious about this uh, whole on foot business. Because at the moment, it's like it is kind of, it's a little bit limited, yeah. isn't it? I think that's the thing. Yeah, actually, that that brings a point that I was hoping for too. Now that they're doing, they've they've already forecasted out like the next year and. You know that after 14 there's going to be a 15 and a 16. Mm -hmm. Maybe that um, we're hoping. I hope that they, because there it's such a small change, they can make the VR work on foot. Oh yeah. Where you don't have to use the camera suite to make it be like third person to stay in, you know, in full VR without having to do that. It would be so great because. I mean, that's Imagine, the only thing that's really missing. Yeah. With Odyssey. Yeah. Sort of imagine the sort of things you can get up to. I mean, if you're going to allow uh, person to person or or man to th man to Thargoid fighting, then what about boarding ships? You know, what about you know ship ship boarding action? Think about you know well, what. We the, Think about what that could mean for you know piracy and all that. Wait, when you mean boarding, you mean boarding when you're not in a wing with somebody else, like we've done before. Well, what I mean is, literally, in vac in EVA suits, transfer from ship to ship in space, uh, just using your maneuvering pack. Yeah, and if you can do that, well, that opens up a lot of possibilities for both role play and for potential tactical stuff. Mm -hmm. but are we allowed to barbecue them with our main thrusters? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. I see them boring. <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, that's, that's why I didn't you... say anything else. <laughs> yes. Yeah, me. I want to fight back. <laughs> Fighting back with I thrusters. To, uh, yeah. Punch them with my main and, and uh, yeah, I want to see that the blood let her. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think the piggy rating is too low for the blood splatter, but you can get everything else then. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, if it was like a Peggy eighteen or something, yeah. you might get that. But yeah, it's it's not at the moment that I remember. <laughs> Yeah, I, I went. I went to look my. I torch it on him, and I was want to see the the the, the heat uh, raising. <laughs> if he comes to my main thrusters, or just a, a little bit with the with the side thrusters, and push him 
into a far orbit or something like that. <laughs> Elite barbecue, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what would be the most efficient way to mine in a wing? It's just like we target the same rocks or that can work very well. It doesn't I don't know actually the difference it actually makes, to be honest. It makes a small difference, I think, targeting the same rock. But I think it also slows things down quite a bit. Um just try at both and see what happens, I suppose. I'm not really an expert miner, so I'm probably the wrong person to ask in that regard. I have done, obviously, wing mining a few times, but we never really like sat down and tried to work it out. I know, in theory, wing mining is supposed to be more efficient, but is it? does it make a huge difference? Maybe. I think it's easy to keep the motivation up when you're mining in a wing. No, I just read that the uh, like um the rocks. I mean, are, do they do they deplete for both of us, or do we each have our own separate counter? Uh, like, mm, I have no idea. Well, that's an interesting question. Let me see if I can. You we went should... and targeted a different rock. Let me fire off my own prospector. And then mm -hmm. see what it reports on this rock I've targeted here. Um, I think the actual overall overall percentage of the rock remaining is the same between both of us, because I I see it definitely went down. I mean, mine, the one that you're targeting right now, or that you're blasting it, is, is at zero for me. So. Oh, well, maybe it's a little different then. Mm -hmm. It's about to be zero for me. There it is. Now it says it's depleted. Yeah, so we should target the same rocks if we find one with uh, uh, high yield. Yeah. Like this one here has 20, the one to your left, that I just, just next to. Uh, let's see. The one that already has a prospector limpet on yeah, it? Yeah, I got 20%. Oh yeah, that's a good that's a good one. Yeah, definitely. Let's uh, go ahead and mine that one. I'll just start firing lasers as soon as I get in range. There we go. It doesn't really matter whose limpets pick up much bigger cargo hold than I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is. Just call out, you know. Just call out when, spot, right. when you're done. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, but you can still, if you still have ways to go, it will just li oh, yeah. linger. You call them oh, is your are you is your cargo hold full? No, no, no. no. Yeah. Thank you for the evening. For yeah. the fun. Uh, it's been great. Yeah, I had nice picture as well. Uh, I'll catch you guys again later. Awesome. See you soon. Definitely right. a good, <clears throat> good. I think it was also a good idea, uh, Kit, for suggesting everybody go to the horizon so we could get everybody even together for the last meetup. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. It's been great. I'll have to get going <laughs> myself shortly, so I'm just looking at the underside of the carrier, which I don't usually film. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I was late to the uh, late to the get together, but I literally, up until about thirty minutes before I got there, I was not feeling too good. I was oh. I was actually um, having some trouble um, even getting this you know, sleep, and I overslept a little bit. But now I'm okay. Well, that's good. Well, I hope you feel better, Jen. Oh, you know. God, dear. But better late than never. I'd rather people like show up five minutes oh, yeah. before the end and like join the match jump than not show up at all. So you know, it's all it's all good, really. Don't worry about it. Just take care of yourself. Yeah, and, it was, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of re yeah, it was kind of relieved that I that I got there at least for that. But uh, and I'm, and I'm helping out with the mining, so that's also yeah. good. Mm -hmm. All right, so. So this rock here, the one where I'm at, is got like almost fifteen percent. So sure, let me fire off my own. Uh... 
Uh, you need to prospect it yourself, right? So it's rather. Actually, awesome. I can target Mine your prospector, yeah. and it'll work. But if you want to move on to a different rock, then um, uh, it'll allow you to move on there. Where is my mining laser? Come on, there we go. I would just out of range. That's all it was. There we go. <laughs> Dude, I just tried to post a bunch of pictures in a single post in Discord, and now they changed the message. Your files are too powerful. <laughs> yeah. No, you do get that sometimes. Sometimes you've got to like basically put it through a processing package and like scale the res down a bit. I've had to do that a couple of times. So. Yeah, it does happen. I, yeah, well, I always. It was, uh, well, it was because um, I, I uh, have it. I said, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I was just saying it, it's because I, I I had nine pictures in one post instead of doing oh, one by oh, one. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, well, yeah so. you should probably limit that to about four or five. So next week is uh, CQC then. That's right, yeah. Did I get that correctly? Or yep, yep, that's the one. Really looking forward to that. Yeah, it's been a while. I must admit, outside of Expeditions, yeah, I don't do CQC so at all. But it is great fun. With it. No matter how good or bad you are, it's always fun. Because it's kind of chaos. <laughs> the, even, even the most chaotic meet is never yeah. quite as chaotic oh, yeah. as CQC. CQC is just mad. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hardly been developed. It's not been touched since the oh, day it was released. Do team? We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll probably, we we'll might do team or might match. do death match, team death match. Because like we would try all of them if we if you like. It's not a problem. But yeah, getting a, a match is not going to be hard with an expedition oh, yeah, worth of sure. people. Yeah. This is one of the good things about expeditions. You are going to get enough people to have a match with, guaranteed. It isn't always guaranteed you can get with the same group of people each yeah. time. Because it's usually like, was it four versus four if you've got two different teams against each other in a death match? But yeah, if it's individuals, again, it's just like you can be up to eight individuals. But let's say we have, I don't know, 16 people are there next week. Well, then, you know, you might have two separate games going on potentially. But then those will be mixed up by the computer, I think. You're not always going to be with the same people. And you can team up, though, to fix teams, I think. But it's part of the fun to make it a bit more fluid, I think. So you're with different people at different times. But, yeah, it's a whole different thing. It really is. Mm hmm Yeah. Like I uh am right after the the they fired the Proteus wave. I know when it was I think in August. Was it mm. in August? Sounds about right. Uh, right August or September. September or August, I think. Yeah. But they they got this uh I, I read it on I just saw it on Reddit that um some people in playing CQC they got uh, interceptors dropping into CQC. Hmm? Which oh, was obviously really? a bug, and they fixed, yeah, yeah, they fixed it uh, re really quickly. But uh, kind of sad, just yeah. thought it was kind of funny, like you being in this kind of separate game, and an interceptor like drops in. Like, yeah. That is weird. Cause I always thought they were completely separate. Maybe there is actually more of a common code base than we realize. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Frontier fixed it, like, uh, within two days, I think. But the fact that it can happen is the most interesting part of that, though. Because I assumed that yeah. it couldn't. I always assumed that they were completely... Yeah. I know, like, vaguely one's based on the other, but I thought they were completely separate code bases, really. You know. Unless they intended to actually yeah. do Thargoids in CQC, but never got round to do it, never completed it. That's what the bug was. That makes a lot more sense, actually. If that was, like, going to be, like, CQC's, like, second phase, but they never actually finished it. Funny though. I never heard that one before, but yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I tried. To, I'm trying to find the the Reddit thread. <laughs> well, if what happens with the what people think is gonna happen once the all the Stargoids get here, it's gonna be <laughs> full on 
Thargoid season. So it would yeah. definitely make sense if they throw that in a CQC too. Possibly. I'm yeah. looking Target forward practice. to see. I'm looking forward to see what uh, what people post when they finally encounter Thargoids on the ground outside their ship. <laughs> that could get very interesting. But there's the theory. I mean, I don't get too much into sort of Thargoid territory out on an expedition, but there is obviously the widespread theories now, especially with the the, 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 the splitting of the game and, uh, you know, update 14 being what it is. It's like, are they really clearing the stage for the burning of the bubble or at least burning lots of the bubble and creating lots of chaos that way? It's like, if they do, that'd be very interesting. I mean, I don't know what the effects would be necessarily. It depends how much damage is done and how widespread it is because it's obviously been speculated upon ever since the thargoids turned up in in elite dangerous like you know would the bubble burn at some point and if it did how much and would it create like a sort of convoy of refugees to colonia stuff like that really i mean most of the colonia sort of uh, gaming groups have actually been obviously speculating about that for a very long time and were kind of prepared for it for years but nothing ever happened is that about to change it's an interesting theory, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, for, for role-playing purposes, at least, right? It's mm. kind of... I mean, because there are commanders leaving for Colonia, right? Right, as we're speaking, but mostly for role-playing purposes, which I find kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, making the journey there, making it your home system. Yeah. Is, but I've, kind of I have I do have well, an old... I spent about a year and a half out at Colonia gaming in. Mm. It's an interesting place, yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, right, uh, right after, uh, right after Distant Worlds Two, I, I actually didn't come back to the bubble fully for like a couple of, for about a year and a half. Mm. There's plenty. There's plenty to do. There's plenty to do out oh, 100%, there. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's a few, guess especially if you're exploring. Yeah, right. a lot of the people who are actually in Colonia factions or still are are explorers anyway, because that's the kind of personality that tends to go out that way. You don't get as many traders and other sorts of player styles out there, which is a shame, really. But as you say, there's plenty to do in Colonia. There always has been. Mm. Ah, thank you well, for yeah, the video, Stratkask. Yeah, hi. What's your opinion on how um, player groups are going to be affected? If they start having um, Thargoids taking over different systems in the bubble? Well, this is a good question. I mean, uh, that's what I was, I was just like, uh, alluding to. It depends on the level of damage and what the effects of a Thargoid, sorry, a Thargoid attack or a bigger Thargoid war would happen. Because if you start knocking out all these different um, you know, background simulation sort of levels or making them i don't know let's say zeroing them effectively what would be the consequence because a lot of people then complain that years of bgs work have been negated all of a sudden how far are frontier willing to go because that's the question because so far most of the you know like the thargoid attacks on stations have only had a very temporary and kind of minor effect on a local bgs they've not had like galaxy-wide effects but you know because that's the only thing that might be controversial i mean personally I don't really mind, but then again, I'm not a massive BGS sort of player either. I have done it in the past, but it really depends on what people's level of tolerance is, because some people will cry murder for their you know, BGS being upset and them either losing everything or losing a system or two to you know the Thargoids. Or... So this is the thing. There's so many permutations to it. So much depends on the execution. But... I am interested to see what Frontier will do with this, but as I was about to say, I do have an account in the bubble uh, just to, to sort of like watch all this stuff if when it goes down. Obviously, my other two accounts are still with this expedition here, so it's, uh, yeah, it's it'll be interesting, but until it happens, there's, there's not really too much you can say in I advance. I just had I don't the think. weirdest... Yeah. Yeah. yeah go I just for had it. the weirdest mental image some uh somebody really invested in the bgs as, as um i forget the guy's name but from the office which He's, office the british or american a few thargoids <laughs> because they're yeah well the guy who says you have my stapler 
Uh, you mean the Dwight Schrute? Or... Yeah. <laughs> oh, from the movie The Office. I guess it's the yeah. movie, but, but you know, I'm at, you know the, that guy who finally just snapped and blew the place up at the end. I'm not sure I know that one. Ah, yeah, I know which one you mean. Yeah, yeah. But is it is this is it called The Office as well? Yeah, I wasn't aware. Yeah. It's either Office or like Office just... Space. Or... Uh, office Space. Oh, oh that's quite different. Gets, that's uh, different. Uh, uh, hypnotized. Uh, yeah. In the beginning. Ah, right, right. Okay. Yeah. I'm just envisioning this uh, crazy thing where, you know, yes, the the pre yes the the ones who really offended Terra are the ones who want their stapler back <laughs> from the Thargoids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it is so dependent, really, isn't it? It's... All right, everybody, I, I gotta jump out. Okay, right, cool. Take care. Catch you later. Thanks, thanks for the meetup, See you. guys. <laughs> there. Bit, I'm just yeah. a bit disappointed in like how it, the whole Fargot stuff went. Oh yeah, I mean, it appears that they're like uh, they they just dropped off screen kind of, and I thought this would be like a cool way to like introduce maybe a new power play faction to the game or something like that. But it appears they're just, I mean, yeah, like gone. But maybe they will show up again. I don't know. Well, they have their their mega. Just, right. So ah, just right. Yeah, they just haven't been found yet, right? Right. Yeah. Well, maybe the maybe the Stargoids are their mega ships. <laughs> well, but they only had two versus eight Stargoids. I still wonder what. And I don't the know actual... where the Fargod cult would get into would get starships that could distort time and reality. <laughs> it's an interesting from, thought, from isn't here. it? Yeah. As a gift. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else got terrariums. <laughs> <laughs> and skateboards. <laughs> hoverboards. <Skateboards. laughs> it's the 34th century, it's got to be a hoverboard. Haven't you seen the skateboards that all the. For their new. Um... Uh, what do they call them? Their new partners. Uh, they give no. everybody the skateboards and the. There's a great picture of Weatherspoon holding his skateboard and his, um, his jersey. Somebody needs to make a T-shirt saying, "Yes, I participated in the Thargoid War, and all I got was this lousy skateboard." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Ah, oh, dear. Uh, interesting times, though. Interesting times. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm perfectly content with like watching from, I don't know wherever we are right now. Yeah. Honest. Not not because <laughs> I'm scared or anything. It's just like all this. I mean, it, it, story wise, it's interesting, but this this gameplay loop of hiding Thargoids, I don't know. Especially in a community event, is rather boring. It would be good if they went full on, though. Quiet. Yeah. Well, it depends on the stakes. I mean, what if they went, went uh, bold? What if they F Dev went bold and said they're invading Terra? You know, mm -hmm. and that could be a permanent. Yeah, you know, could be a semi-permanent state. What if? What if they actually take over? Saul, and it'll be your job in the next coming months to literally take Saul back. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's what I don't get. I mean, what? I mean, it's the year. I mean, I mean, how far? Like in, in like, uh, if you look at the human history within Elite, I mean, how far are we still? Are we still connected to Saul? I mean, who, who gives a shit to be honest? Except <laughs> for the people who live there or in the system no i mean really right you know it's, I, I know the it's cares about Saul. Yeah. yeah i think i would have thought let's think of from the perspective of maybe like a future person maybe it's because right. it's symbolic home of humanity i mean that that's just it isn't it? it's like symbols sometimes yeah. it's just like maybe this is just an analogy to no um, slight to, to americans canadians or anyone else i might mention but think of the way that britain uh, is viewed by canada and america it's like 
it's not necessarily that important unless you actually have direct connections but it's viewed as kind of an interesting place where like the a lot of the ancestors came over from it's more of a symbolic kind of connection than anything else and it maybe that's yeah, the way that yeah. humans would view soul in the future it's like we don't really want it to be destroyed but it's not it's only more of a symbolic importance but symbols can matter though that's the thing especially when the war starts things symbols can matter a lot but I don't know if, as uh, Logan was alluding to, if they if Frontier did go hard and like you know the bubble was charred and let's say I don't know half the population of humanity died or something like that, now that would be interesting. Now that would be like a serious upset, and I'm kind of like cheerleading for a serious upset just to see what would happen. You know, not that humanity gets wiped out, but it just yeah. you know there's like a really serious kickback. You know, or really serious consequences anyway. Or if you really wanted to threaten it, but maybe not commit fully, have the Thargoids start taking some of the outer planets like Uranus and Neptune and, uh, you know, that kind of thing and threaten it and see what people do. Yeah, like they're they working their way towards the inner solar system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there are a bunch of permit locked moons uh, within Sol, exactly right? so who knows what will There's... happen there <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but yeah something bold in storytelling because frontier storytelling so far has been generally fairly kind of cautious isn't it it's been like usually centered on one particular star system or a couple of star systems it's not usually been like a yeah. galaxy wide or like yeah. a good portion of the bubble is just like uninhabitable or something and maybe if the Thargoids got pushed out, then you'd have yeah. to send ships in to rebuild those places. Or, you know, there's all kinds of ways you could play it that could be really cool uh -huh. and really interesting. But I think the worst thing they could do is make just like another sort of, yeah. you know, just you have station fires and that's about it. And you have Thargoid attacks on stations and it doesn't end up being anything more than that. It's it's a bit too kind of overcautious as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I think a lot of people think that as well, but I'm, I'm pretty much not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> and think of it this way with the alliance and with the empire oh and as an aside i've been seeing a lot of um postings saying yeah place your ships and such in the empire space because the feds because the feds are going to burn first <laughs> <laughs> do they know something that we don't <laughs> but, uh, but uh yeah uh, but anyway, this, but anyway, no, the, um, you know, with several different places within, even within the bubble that can be good redoubts or even Colonia itself, Yeah. you know, losing, uh, losing Saul temporarily or maybe permanently doesn't, maybe we become, you know, maybe that's the whole point. We become a true spacefaring race and not dependent on a home world or, yeah. have to even have to even consider it interesting you've hit on there and, about um, a home world i think like, a lot of people would be up for that there's an interesting theory that the thargoids i think this is about the time of frontier elite 2 that there is actually the thargoids don't have a home world to be attacked they they may once they they did but the theory was that yeah. there was like eight different like waves of thargoids that would like move through the galaxy like a migration pattern of birds so what we what we felt before in like centuries previously yeah. was like one wave and more recently there's been another wave and so you see it's it's like they will happen from time to time just because that's what they do interesting thought i'm not saying that frontier could definitely play that but it's there in the law basically so but yeah. uh, but again, even in the law, these are these yeah. are supposed to be theories from like, like scientists said, and what have you. Yeah, you know, maybe having uh, I mean, Colonia itself as a as a secondary bubble was a complete accident. Oh yeah, totally. You know, they were they no they had no idea that the player base would be so interested in developing. Mm -hmm. that area around uh, the station rather than just consider it a curiosity oh yeah but you're right it was an accident that... i think it helps that it's yeah. certainly a lovely yeah i think it certainly helps that it's a lovely pl area of space it always does yeah the Cody nebula is genuinely the beautiful player place. base or, or yeah or like player driven yeah. changes within elite are really cool yeah 
Yeah. But at least with Colonia, it's, it's transparent. What I kind of find a bit upsetting lately is this these statements by FDF that players are actually, the player choice is affecting the way the stories go, which is cool, obviously, but it's it's not really that transparent. And I don't like this kind of nudging with, uh, you know, like getting the, mm -hmm. the better heat sink launcher if you join this faction. Like, I find it kind of, I don't know, uh, too... I mean, why wouldn't I support someone if I have like a... Uh, AX combat vessel and someone is offering me pre-engineered heatsink launchers of course I will support this faction or whatever right mm -hmm. I mean I would really care what they stand for or who they are so it's I don't know it's it's where's this this to me it feels kind of like a like wearing this mask of well it's it's the, the players are affecting the story but in the end it's trinkets and and gifts and and <laughs> you know yeah kind of off putting to me i know what you mean yeah i mean how many people i mean i watched yeah. so many twitch players who were on operation witch hunt yeah. but then they would support uh azimuth a week later because they wanted a permit for a system you know which i find kind of i mean i, yeah, but you I, can't, I get it you can't blame fdev because people are making those kinds of economical no. choices well i'm not blaming after but not necessarily i just find it kind of i find it kind of odd to say that it's players choice altering the galaxy when it's them putting these incentives <clears throat> you know there for the players to choose mm. and it's Let not really a choice you know yeah. if, some, if 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 i'm getting like i said the heatsink launcher from the one hand and maybe just a credit payout from the other side of course i will go for the heat sinks i mean it's it's not really a choice between a and b right mm -hmm. it's always a choice you right. can either play the game to max min or you can play the game to role play yeah yeah and, and a lot of people play it for max min yeah that's there's true. nothing wrong with that it's just a, cho a choice in how you want to play it and so if you want to play it with the the game and the storyline that f dev is putting out then you you don't play max min. I don't really know what you're referring to with max min. I'm and I'm not blaming players. I'm just no no no. Max min just means that you're going to make choices that maximize your ships or maximize your ability to play the game. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Instead of recognizing that in a role playing game, sometimes you make choices that make you more vulnerable or actually screw the pooch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a. Uh... I'll uh, work for almost any of the engineers just to um, get stuff, but there's one engineer out in Colonia. I vastly question what I'm doing, and it's that guy who wants occupied escape pods, and I'm like, yeah. you know, I don't think I'm going to help that guy. That is a bit sus. Even yeah, on the standards pretty... of the Elite Galaxy, that's pretty sus. <laughs> <sighs> Like, why do you want all these escape that, those pods? Those are the aspects that I really like. Uh, it is funny, at least, you know. It's like, we make this guy look as dodgy as possible. <laughs> well, and yeah. it's the role-playing that I'm most worried about right now with the, the new Thargoids. Because yeah. what if I don't want to play Thargoids? What if I don't want to be a killer and murder and do all that kind of stuff? If, if yeah. my character isn't playing that. How do I play? Yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering. What's coming up for yeah, me? Yeah, exactly. That part of the bubble might burn, but part of it might not. That might be like I don't know a certain portion of it that might do so that people can continue to play that way. But yeah, I mean, I doubt the whole thing will completely go up. Mm -hmm. But it would be well, something extreme happens to yeah, it just happens to let's say you know half the bubble or something or a certain area. However, you want to define that area. But yeah, and I think F have always been very conscious of allowing people to play the game in their own way, and th so there's always at least a way of doing so. Mm -hmm. And not always, but like mostly, yeah, mostly. All right, I docked with Endeavor now. anyone's in Endeavor's bar at the moment. I mean, story purposes, I... 
I certainly wouldn't be averse to seeing, you know, Saul and even Terra, uh, Earth itself being, you know, overrun for a bit. Mm -hmm. That's that's a powerful story there. Yeah, definitely. But I, I but from the standpoint of you know, like you were saying about symbols earlier, I think that would be good to provide motivation for taking it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's kind of like, you know, um, yeah, it's almost like, um, you know, no offense, but, uh, it's almost as if, you know, in world war two, it's like, uh, yeah, we can beat it. We we can uh, denigrate any England all we like, but you start trying trying to bully up on our little brother. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. I'm just going to say I'm going to shut shut sense. the stream down now. But thank you everyone out there in Twitchland who's been watching tonight. It's been a fun evening, and I uh, I thank you for it. Thank you for all the new follows. And uh, thank you for watching. It's been wonderful. And we'll see you in the next one from some CQC madness. Until then, fly safe. Goodbye.